During last week's Torah portion, the Jews gathered around the mountain, Mount Sinai, to receive the Ten Commandments, some from God and some from Moses, from Moshe. And then at the end of the Torah portion, we received some of the laws relating to the sacrificial altar in the temple. This week's Torah portion is very different. It contains many laws governing interpersonal conduct. Rashi, the greatest of the biblical commentators, tells us that the reason that those two portions are juxtaposed that they're next to each other, is to teach you that just like the laws in last week's Torah portion were given on the mountain, on Mount Sinai, Har Sinai, so too were the laws in this week's Torah portion. But why would we have thought otherwise? Of course all the laws in the Torah were given to the Jews on the mountain, from Moshe, from God. One explanation is that Rashi wants us to make sure not to make a mistake. We might think that our religious life consists of the rituals, Shabbos, the kosher laws, the holiday laws, sacrificial laws. But that's only half the story. A full half of your religious life also consists of interpersonal conduct, how you treat other people. Another explanation is that Rashi means to tell us, even if the Torah wasn't given, you would have figured out some of those laws on your own. You would have figured out not to steal and not to murder. Otherwise, how can you have a civilized society? So it tries to remind us that those laws too came from God. But Rashi's really teaching us in that arena a much deeper point. Because if we had only intuited the laws against theft and murder and the laws of damages and negligence on our own, you'd never have figured out just how far the Torah extends them. For example, if you wake someone up earlier than they had planned to arise, or you keep them up by making too much noise, you're guilty of theft. You've stolen sleep from someone. If you embarrass someone in public, you're guilty of murder. It's as if you murdered them. Think about that the next time you insult someone with many people copied on an email or chat chain. When I was younger, I used to love to watch the Six Million Dollar Man, the Bionic Man. When they rebuilt him, they made him better, stronger, faster. Steve Austin, astronaut, a man barely alive. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the capability to make the world's first bionic man. Better than he was before. Better. Stronger. Faster. Through the Torah's laws of interpersonal conduct, God is engaged in a radical social re-engineering project. He's also trying to make us better. Not stronger and faster, but kinder, more sensitive, more empathetic. If you delve into those laws, you study them in all of their details, all of their applications, and then you practice them, you become a different person, a kinder, gentler, more sensitive person. Worried, thinking each time before you say something, before you act, how's that going to affect someone else? Is it going to insult them? Is it going to embarrass them? Is it going to step on their toes? I've got to be careful about that. And even though it might be fun to say it or do it, I can't at someone else's expense because the Torah demands more of me. It wants me to be better, kinder, and gentler. Uh -huh.